Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to another session of the show that's on the tip of everyone's tongue and not the end of my fingers. It says it's three, two, one. Can't do that yet, can you? Three, two, one. No, the show that pushes out the prizes, piles on the pounds. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us in the studio. And a big thank you at home. I really hope that at home you watch us when we go out because it might be the age of the train, but it's also the age of the video recorder. Yeah, anybody here got one of those video... Have you got one? I never in for London Night Out, but I can always visit Brighthead Revisited whenever I like. I see Tis was when it's a has-been, and Armchair Thriller when I'm in bed, blankety-blank when there's nothing on, and Horizon when it's disappeared. And Pebble Mill at one at four, and News at ten at three a.m. in the afternoon. So what chance have we got? Another four. That's darn good. Clearly. However, one character to beware of on our show, you know who that is, ladies and gentlemen, our resident booby prize. Will you please greet now our metallic, smart alec, dusty bin. Here he is. Yeah, look at that. The only dustbin to empty himself. <laughs> Mind you, he's not quite a dustbin yet, you know. He hasn't learned to leave the gate open yet at the end of the garden, but it's good to have you with us. Looking after him this week, we've got lovely Fiona Curzon. Fiona, how are you? <laughs> lovely? Yeah. Okay. He's got me. What, what's he supposed to be this week? What's well, he's a song and dance man because we're going to the Vaudeville Theatre tonight. And on stage we've got Eli Woods, Jeep, Lipstick, Sandy Powell and Arthur English. Huh? And I know you wanted to know all that, so now I'll kindly leave the stage. Not before we meet the most important people on our show. As always, our contestants, please greet them right now. Okay, our thousand to one quiz. Our couples can win up to a thousand pounds. Two rounds of questioning, ten pounds each correct answer in the first round. Whatever they win then is what they play for. Each correct answer, second round. Let's meet our first couple tonight. We have Jackie and Ken Wait. That is right, the right way. That's I said right, that right. Yes. Ken Wait from Doncaster, yes? And Ken Wait, and what's your occupation? Ken, what do you do? I uh, work, for the, work for the Inland Revenue. <laughs> the infernal revenue. <laughs> No, income tax, that's the fine you pay for reckless thriving, isn't it? <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Do you work in an office or do you cover a specific area, Ken, or what? Yes, I work in an office that deals with the town of Doncaster itself. And uh -huh. uh, I'm just one of the whole office. I see, so if you get the letters now and again, now you know what he looks like. <laughs> And Jackie, let's talk with you now. You're a working wife too, yes? yes. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I also work for the Inland Revenue. <laughs> I've got blood sucking in stereo. Here. The tax at the same place as Ken? Uh, not in the same office, but in, both in the same area. Same area, yes. I see. Well, I'm going to keep my eye on you too. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a weight watcher. How's that? Oh. Be good. Well, it's good to have the two of you here. Let's get on with the quiz and have your questions. With your questions, Libby Roberts has the questions. Hello. Thank you, Liv. Hey. Nice outfit. Like that. Good, good. Would you like to select one of those three envelopes, please, Ken or Jackie? Oh, God, no. I Thank you, Libby. OK, you know we like you to answer alternately. Ladies first, Jackie. Two ways we can stop you if you make a mistake. Run out of time, and if you don't know an answer, please just say don't know. I'll go on with the next question. We'll let you have one to start with. Now, ten pounds. This question is about famous partnerships in various areas of show business. We will give you one name, and we want you to give us the name most closely associated with it. Now, Stan Laurel is always connected with Oliver Hardy. So that's the one we'll start you with. Stan Laurel and... Oliver Hardy. Windsor Davis. Don Estelle. Paul Simon. Don't know. Rod Hull. Emu. Nervo. Don't know. Starsky. Hutch. Janet MacDonald. Don't know. Hinge. Bracket. Cannon. Ball. Anne Ziegler. Don't know. Ah, well, that was the ten. Anne Ziegler and Webster Booth. Maybe it's just a little touch before your time. You did know that, did you? Ah. <laughs> Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy. And all this, uh, Paul Simon, uh, Garfunkel. Yeah. Simon and Garfunkel, now you know. Not bad, though. I think you've got seven right there. No, six, sorry. Sixty pounds you have. It's not bad. That's not bad. Ah, uh, yes. Because... 
The other one was Nervo and Knox, one of the original crazy gang, but that's not a bad start. £60. Here we've got Christopher and Jill. You're from Coventry. Uh huh. And uh, Chris, what do you? What sort of work do you do? I'm an environmental health officer. Environmental health officer. What, what do you actually? I mean, what, well, what do you I deal with air pollution and noise control. And how about you, Jill? Do you, do you work too? Yes, I'm a um, Crown Court usher. A Crown Court usher. That's right. I see. Well, that says that is what it says. You usher the people into the court, do you, and look after them? That's right. Just generally look after them, mm. help to make things run smoothly. Let's have your questions. Libby's has got them. Good. Take one of those two envelopes, would you? Thank okay, you. good for you. £60, pounds our first couple got. See how you're going to get on here. This question is about male singers who have had hit singles in Britain and who have distinctive first names. We will give you the first name of the singer and we want you to give us the surname. Now, a man who had a hit and a big mate of mine in 1970 was Sasha Distel. So that's the one we'll start you with, Sasha. Distel. Acker. Bilk. Fats. Domino. Elton. John. Engelbert. Humperdinck. Long John. Baldry. Cat. Stephen. Leaf. Don't know. Demis. Don't know. Chubby. Checker. Right. Chubby Checker. Only two you didn't know. Leaf Garrett. Of course, he's had a lot of hit records. And Demis Roussos. Only two you didn't know there. You've done well. Eight right. 80 pounds you've got. <laughs> it started well. 82. <laughs> Lorraine and Jeffrey. <laughs> Lorraine and Jeffrey. Lorraine and Jeffrey Jesna from Glasgow. Yeah. Jesna. Now, Jeff, is, is that a Scots name, Jesna? Eh, uh, no. Oh. Not really. Well, can I ask what it is? It's uh, originally from Poland. From Poland? And they couldn't even get to that Poland, really? Oh, yeah, but there's no questioning that accent, eh? Uh, no. Lovely Scots accent from Glasgow. And what do you do for a living, Jeff? I'm a chartered accountant. Chartered accountant. And, and it says here that you have a, a special name for chartered accountants. Well, right? we sometimes call ourselves Charlie's Ants. Charlie's on. No special reason. It just, just CA, uh, yes? What about you, Lorraine? On your card, it says that you, you two eventually got together because you kept bumping into each other. Is that right? That's right, yeah. I see. And uh, there was a mysterious Valentine card. Well, we started to go out three days before Valentine's Day, and I didn't know whether to send him a Valentine card or not. I thought he might send me one. So I sent him one. And I got a Valentine card, so I thought it was just as well I sent him. But it wasn't from him. Huh? <laughs> I well, don't know. It really wasn't from you, Jeff. No. Well, well uh, uh, did it have a stamp on it? Yes. Oh, I see. Well, it couldn't have come from Scotland. <laughs> Let's have your All questions. Right. Okay, Libby, the, the last envelope, and good luck to you. Answer alternately, and here we go. This question is about female singers who have had hit singles in Britain and who have a distinctive first name. We will give you the first name of the singer. We want you to give us the surname. Her great favourite today, of course, is a fellow Scots lass, Sheena Easton. So that's the one we'll start you with. Sheena Easton. Kiki. D. Joni. Pass. Emmy Lou. Pass. Elkie. Brooks. Eartha. Kit. Aretha. Franklin. Cloda. Rogers. Crystal. No. Nope. Alma. Pass. Ah, Alma Cogan great late Alma Cogan. Crystal Gale it was. Joni Mitchell was the other one we wanted, but you've not done that. I think you've got seven right, have you? No, you've got six. Right, 60 pounds. You've got 60 pounds. <laughs> yes, because it was Emmy Lou Harris. I thought you'd got that one, but we've not done bad. At the end of the first round here, what have we got? We've got two couples, couples number one and number three on 60 pounds. In the lead at the moment, couple number two, Jill and Chris on 80 pounds. Okay, and now then, Jackie and Ken, you're going for £60 each correct answer this time. Choose your second round questions. Yeah, you choose them, she says, Ken. <laughs> okay, good luck to you. Now then, let's see how we're going to get on this time. This question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters T-I. We will give you a definition. We want you to give us the word. So words beginning with T-I, a piece of wood used in a building is timber. So that's what we'll start you with. A piece of wood used in a building is... Timber. A slang word for the heart. Don't know. Large member of the cat family. Don't know. Pet quarrel. T-R. Tip. Jeweled headdress. Tiara. Clothing called pantyhose in America. Tights. Home of the Dalai Lama. Don't know. Twelve hourly rise and fall of the sea. Tide. Cash register in a shop. Till. Sign language used by bookmakers. Tick. Ah. Well, what do we do? I've got to throw it to a... Yes, it's okay. Yes, I've got the nod of approval from our adjudicator. Tick, in fact, we wanted Tic Tac, but she's let that one go through. So that's not too bad. The home of the Dalai Lama was Tibet. Tibet. 
here. What else did we have? Large member of the cat family, a tiger. Yeah, I thought you'd have got that. Slang word for the heart is a ticker. Ticker. You've heard that before. Yes. At the end of that round, what have you got? 420 pounds. <laughs> you got 420. That's not bad. Not bad. Okay, Chris and Jill. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you select them. You're going for 80 pounds for each correct answer this time. Now, your question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters A-R. We will give you a definition. We want you to give us the word. So, words beginning with A-R. An enclosed space for a sporting event is an arena. So, that's what we'll start you with. An enclosed space for a sporting event is... Arena. Noah's vessel. Ark. Designer of buildings. Architect. A large number of ships. Armada. A distinctive smell. Aroma. A person using a bow and arrow. Archer. An arched passageway with shops. Arcade. Ocean round the North Pole. Arctic. A very important angel. Arctic. And the study of the past by... Right on the butt. Couldn't get that one, but you didn't do bad. You got everyone correct. So at the end of that, what have we got? Now it's 720 pounds. Yes, I saw you. Thank you, Fiona. What are you tapping? You've got a card there. Three, two, one. Now, who, that's for you. Somebody yes, sent you that. Yes, someone who was in Chicago with me. Really? Uh, send you that course. card. Is that supposed to be you and Jeff? Yes. Well, it's very, very good. <laughs> Lovely. Good. Now, good luck to you. You're going for £60 for each correct answer. This question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters S-T. We will give you a definition. We want you to give us the words. So, words beginning with S-T. A headlong rush of startled horses is a stampede. So that's what we'll start you with. A headlong, headlong rush of startled horses is a... Stampede. A place where a train stops officially. Station. Adult male deer. Stag. Indelible mark. Stain. Raised platform in a theatre. Stage. A distant object appearing as point of light. Pass. Support for a rider's foot. Stirrup. Total goods kept in a shop. Stock. A bird that in folklore delivers babies. Stock. And a person following a course at university? Student. Right, yeah, okay. Only one we didn't know there, and that was a distant object appearing as point of light. A star. At the end of that, what have you done? 540 pounds we got. 540. Well done. And a quick this. And if you folks were looking at the groups of letters, the two letters we gave each couple there, they spelled out A-R-T-I-S-T, -T, which is artist, which ties in with this week's theme of vaudeville. But at the end of the quiz this week, we have, we've got couple, what have we got here? It's a bit of a tight one. Couple number one, 420 pounds. Couple number three have got 540. The winners, as in round one, are Jill and Chris. 720 pounds they've got. <laughs> But that means they'll be joining the Jeff and Lorraine there in part two to go right through to see if they're going to have a chance to take home a big prize. But we do have to say good night, I'm afraid, to Ken and Jackie. But uh, our, tax, our tax officials didn't do bad with 400 and tw £420. Pounds. <laughs> and there it is. Thank you. Are, are you going to declare that, Ken? Thank you. I don't think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Ken. Thanks thank for you, coming. Thank you. Jack, take care. Mm. Bless you. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Right. Time for the break. We'll be back with these marvellous people. After that, see you shortly. Three, two, one. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, with our theme of vaudeville, we have our two remaining couples who will be staying with us right through part two. We've got Jeff and Lorraine from Glasgow and Chris and Jill from Coventry. Good luck to you. You're going to see three items. When we've got three on the table, I'll ask you each to choose one you'd like to reject if you're lucky enough to get through. So, with our theme of vaudeville, let's get on with our first item. You know, uh, the first act we've got for you tonight that used to knock them dead, it's the exotic fan dance. And here, performing it for you, we've got a group that we've all become great fans of. Will you please welcome Lipstick? Give them an act 
with lots of flash in it and the reaction will be passionate give them the old Razzle Dazzle, yes. lovely. Now you're going to leave that for the clue. That's a fan, yes? A fan, yes. All right, and you have a rhyme for these folks? Yes, certainly. Lipstick wore bare minimum. Their fans loved every minute. Mother wasn't struck on it. So, what will you put in it? What will you put in it? Any ideas, yeah? All right. How about you, Chris? Mm -hmm. It obviously suggests they feather, put in it. Duster, dusty. Dusty. Oh, well, dusty. At least you're thinking of getting rid of him straight away, which is good, because <laughs> if you win him, you just take him a brand new bin. But thank you, Emma, of lipstick. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Good luck. Lovely. Okay. Well, that's good. You're thinking about it straight away. You thought you think it's Dusty Ben? Or you're gonna you're gonna reserve that, yeah. To... Okay then, so let's have our next item. Now we're gonna pay tribute to a film funny man who appeared in many, many guises. He'll probably be best remembered for a schoolmaster. He, of course, was the great Will Hay. His class not only found it difficult to learn foreign languages, they even had trouble with English. Salutation. Late again, Darcy. Hey, hey. Good morning, boys. Morning, morning sir. sir. What's the matter with our bottle? He's been drinking, sir. Ah, he's had the right skin full. I think you'd better wake him. No. Or let him ferment. <laughs> yes. Right, now pay attention, you lot. I've been given this class because you're all supposed to be illiterate. Uh, sir. That means you can't read, Albert. Now, it's my job to teach you to read. It sounds impossible, I know, but I thought I'd start by teaching you the names of the school football team. Hooray! Hooray! That's what I like, enthusiasm. <laughs> now then, it's a right little United Nations we've got this term. The goalkeeper is a little Chinese lad called Hu. The centre-half's name is what? The inside right, a little lad from Thailand called Sku Smee. The outside right, he goes by the name of Bikos. He's a little Turkish lad. He's a delight to watch. Over on the other wing, there, the outside left, his name is Y. Now, the centre forward's name is I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that'll do to be getting on with. Will you write those down first? Uh, uh, please, sir. Yes. Uh, can you say again, who's in goal? Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, pardon? Who's in goal? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you, I'm telling you who's in goal. Well, I'm asking you who's in goal. That's the boy's name. That's whose name? Yes. Look, 
what's the boy's name in goal? What's the boy's name at centre half? I'm not asking who centre half. Who's in goal? I don't know. He's centre forward. We're not talking about him. Look, how did we get to the centre forward? You mentioned his name. Well, if I mentioned his name, who did I say is centre forward? No, who is the goalkeeper? Look, you silly looking. <laughs> Don't bother about the goal. All right, all right, all right. What is it you want to know? What is the name of the centre forward? What is the name of the centre half? I'm not asking no centre half. Who's in goal? I don't know. He's centre forward. Tell us the outside left's name. Why? Well, I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me, who's playing outside left? Who's in goal? <laughs> I just want to know what's the boy's name playing outside left? What's the boy's name playing centre half? I'm not asking who's at centre half. Who's in goal? I don't know. He's centre forward. Listen, listen, listen. Can you tell me the outside left's name? Why? <laughs> because he's outside right. Oh, excuse me. He's inside right. What? Centre forward. Who? Goalkeeper. Well, I don't know. Send the forward. You're balmy. Pardon? You're balmy. Good lad. There you are. You see, our bottle can read. What do you mean he can read? He just said, you're balmy. Well, that's the name of the referee. A little Pakistani lad. You're balmy. Oh, you're balmy. You're balmy. You're balmy. You're balmy. You're balmy. You're balmy. Good to see you. Good to Lovely. See you Good to see you again. And what are you going to leave these folks as the clue? A drawing. A drawing is the clue. And you've got a rhyme for them as well. People always think I'm soft, but that is just a cover. After the final curtain, I'm as bright as any other. Now, any idea? Still mesmerised by lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that, that's a good way to get mesmerised, I can tell you that, Christopher. I'll tell you what, though, we're going to sit back, think about this, and thank Eli thank Woods. Thanks, Eli. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to see you. <laughs> yeah. No? After there's any other, after the final count of the show's over, it could be... Could be what? Drink or something. Or... Drink? Oh. <laughs> How about you, Jill? Any idea what you think? Soft on the outside, it was knitting hard. I can't quite remember myself, <laughs> but at least you're picking up words, which is good. We'll have one more on the table, and then we're going to have to make up our minds of what you'd like to reject <laughs> if you should get through. OK, in the old days of variety, you know, there was nearly always a conjurer who made billiard boards and playing cards appear from nowhere. Now, here to give your impression of one of those old-time conjurers is the marvellous Sandy Powell.
Nah. Yeah, I tell you, I tell you what. My manager Keith Devon will be very upset that you're not doing that marvellous routine of yours tonight, but that was sensational as ever. I think he's on strike. I think that's. He's given. Now, listen, oh, is this my? Uh... That's, you are leaving him. That's the clue, are you? Oh, that you oh, yeah. And what about this rhyme? What does that say? Right. <laughs> Can I leave the Lancashires off? Uh, yes. <laughs> You know that, don't you? Lancashire lasses. Glasses, yes, yes marvellous. Yes. Can you hear me, mother? But which of us is speaking? We'll turn the tables vertically in case you think of peeking. Now, what do you think? Mm. Oh, having a clue here, and they don't seem as though they have either there. But what you're going to do is to thank the marvellous Sandy Powell. Thank you, Sandy. Great to see you. Thanks very much indeed. God bless you. Marvellous. A really marvellous entertainer. Now then, there you are, Sandy. Tables turn tables. Well, wait a minute. You, you, that's what Sandy's just brought in. Any idea what you think? I well, think it could be something to do with the music system because it says, Can you hear me, mother? Which one of us is speaking? You've got mm -hmm. two speakers. Oh, well, then that's pretty something good. Something to do with communication. Uh huh. Well, what I can do is read both of these again. The fan was brought in by Emma of Lipstick, and she said, Lipstick wore bare minimum. Their fans loved every minute. Mother wasn't struck on it, so what will you put in it? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Any idea? Okay, this drawing was brought in, of course, by mm -hmm. Eli. And Eli Wood said, people always think I'm soft, but that is just a cover. After the final curtain, I'm as bright as any other. Oh, well, that seems oh. like a dustbin to me. Is it? Why soft. is that, Chris? Plastic soft. Soft cover. Yeah. Soft cover. Ooh, well, not bad. We've got a few ideas going around here. Dustbins and, uh, and, and music things. Oh, and, and I've what? got a fan on a Spanish holiday. Oh, well, that's a good thought. Well, I tell you what, we've got them on the table here. Now, listen, if you get through, Jeff and Lorraine, which one do you choose to reject if you're lucky enough to get through? I still think the fans must be in. Do you? Well, There's too many clues I can see pointing to, and I can't think of what else they could all point to. Mm -hmm. what well, do you think? what are you right, going to do? Well, we'll reject the fan. You're going to reject the fan if you get through? Yes. yes? And what about you, Chris and Jill? We'll reject. You reject. You want to reject the drawing if you get through because you think... The okay, well, let's see then. Good luck to you. I'm going to ask you now the elimination question. Now, as you know, in front of you there, you have a button. You're not allowed to put your hand on the button, just beside it. As soon as you think you know the answer, hit the button and answer. If you answer before hitting the button, well, the other couple will get a free go, all right? Good luck, and here comes the question now. This question is about a comedian who was born in Rotherham. He made his London debut at the Palace Bow in 1915. His first Royal Variety performance was at the Palladium in 1935. Some years before, he had worked as a double act with his mother called Lily and Sandy. His catchphrase was, can you hear me? Sandy, Sandy Powell. Got it. Uh, yes, you took a chance. I was thinking that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How good it is. Oh, lovely. Oh. I, I thought that I didn't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jeffrey. He's so elated, he's moving the table here. So he, he didn't want to say it, he wanted you to take the chance there, Lorraine, but which you did indeed, it was that it tight, you both knew. I think you did know that too. It's a shame you've got to go, but no, nobody goes away here. Empty-handed, from the quiz, we've got the money. Libby has it, what is it, Libby? 720 720 pounds, that's all. There's your ceramic dusty bin, of course. And here... Here, as a, as a sort of a little consolation prize, we've got a mini weekend in London for you. Anytime you want to go, you just pick up the telephone, you dial through, have a weekend on us, 321. It's been lovely having you with us. Take care, Jill. Thanks very much. And you too, Chris. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Smash it. Lovely. Oh. Well, just a bit too exciting for me. Now, what did you reject? I've forgotten already. It's the fan you've rejected. Yes. You've rejected the fan. Now you're getting through, hopefully, to take home a great prize tonight. OK, we're going away for the break. Be back and see just what it is that Jeff and Lorraine has, in fact, rejected. See you in a minute. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Stand out there, Jeff, and have a good look at them. Let them. That's it. Jeff and Lorraine from Glasgow have won through, and of course they've made their selection here. The fan, which was brought in by Emma from Lipstick, and this is what it said. It said, Lipstick wore bare minimum. Their fans loved every minute. Mother wasn't struck on it. So what will you put in it? So what, what do you think it is then, Lorraine? What do you think? Well, still bin. think it's the bin. Still think, think it's the bin? You think do, Jack? it could be. I think yes. it could be. Okay, Should well, this, it, isn't it? <laughs> this is what it says. Lipstick wore bare minimum. The fans loved every minute, so could this be our minimum prize, which is what you're hoping. The fans on the show would love every minute, of course. Well, they wouldn't love every minute if you won Dusty. But what about the fan that Emma brought in? Well, fans can be used for cooling all sorts of things. And, of course, every car has one. Mother wasn't struck on it. What will you put in it? Well, Mother is often referred to as Mum and wasn't struck on it, so we'll strike her off. Then we have Minimum. Without mum, mm -hmm. that becomes minimum, and you've rejected this so week's mini. star prize, the British Leyland Mini, yes! Oh, oh the rain, Jeff, come round. What about that? Thanks, Jeff. Oh, dear. Well, Jeff, got to be feeling a bit sore about that, huh? Could you do with a new car, Jeff? Not half. Not half. <laughs> we well, couldn't. This is just about half a new car, but what a half a new car. A fabulous car, I'm afraid it has been rejected, so f thanks a lot, Fiona. We've got to go. What we'll do, Jeff and Lorraine, go down the stairs over there, and we'll go back to the table and see what we have lined up for you now. Ooh. What a shame. Oh, dear. I feel just as bad as they do, believe me. Well, we're going to go on right now, ladies and gentlemen, and have our, our next item. Taking the stage now, we've got four young ladies who've combined themselves into a very entertaining unit specialising in songs from the 40s. Here's the only car with four women drivers, Jeep. Spread out, kids. Never. What a voice. Still sure does. We get them over quick. Hewn and a fussing and a fighting ping. Sometimes it gets to be exciting ping. Don't like them hungry neighbors down by the creek. Well, we come out and neighbors next week. Come on. Shoot her grandma, she lies neath clover. Someone caught her bandana over. Picking up a daisy, feuding, a fussing, and a fighting ping. They say it's a run that needs a writing ping. Let's get this funeral service over so then we can start in a feuding again. Lovely. Listen, you're, you're busy ladies these days. I know you've done a lot of television recently and you also have a record soon coming out, don't you? Uh, yes, very shortly. It should be in the shops. Well, That's really right. good luck with that. We'll all be thinking and rooting you. for you. And we're going to leave Jeffrey and Lorraine for the clue. Clue is seeds. Wallflower seeds. They're the clue. Right. All right. And what about the rhyme? Jeep was general purpose, but of course we don't mean the group. Ours is something special. With yours, you're right in the soup. Mm. A sigh from Lorraine. Well, what do you say? Jeep, nothing to do with a car. <laughs> uh, you could be in the soup if you took it, because it might be the bin. General purpose. Well, let's thank Lorraine and think about it. Thank you very much. Paula, oh, Lorraine. You're Lorraine. Bye-bye, Paula. Good luck with Jeep and good luck with the record. 
So, can we hear this one again? Yeah, sure. You'd like to hear the drawing? Yes? Yes, please. All right. Eli said, people always think I'm soft, but that is just a cover. After the final curtain, I'm as bright as any other. It could be furniture if you draw the curtain. It might be like a soft inside of a furniture. It might be a leather cover. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the bin with a cover. And, and what, Any ideas? What do you think about the wallflower seeds that Paula just brought in? I can't remember that one. All I can um, think of is general purpose. Ours, ours is special. Jeep name of the group. But uh, yours would land you in the soup. General yes. purpose land you in the soup. Mm -hmm. And can you remember anything about the dummy that Sandy brought you in? We still, still think, think this is... Uh, Audio equipment, equipment you do. one form So, another. okay, which one of these three would you like to reject now? What do you say, Lorraine? The seeds. The seeds? What was that? So, that's not Sandy's drawing, that's Eli's drawing. See? He's less attentive than I am. So, which one's going? Is it going to be the seeds or what? The drawing. The drawing. The drawing? All right. I'll give me a chance to think about this. You're sure? Yes. All right, she's getting rid of Sandy's drawing by Eli Woods. <laughs> People always think I'm soft. That is just a cover. After the final curtain, I'm as bright as any other. In fact, it's what Eli Wood said. Now then, people always think I'm soft. Is that, that is just a cover. Well, dust has got a cover, but he can't be that soft. There aren't many bins on TV every week. After the final curtain, I'm as bright as any other. Well, could this be something to do with the theatre or stars? Eli brought you in the drawing. And, of course, drawing has, in fact, Lorraine, got a connection with curtains. Also connected with curtains might be soft covers for furnishings. In fact, what you've rejected is this fabulous selection of fabrics and soft furnishings. Take a look at this over here. <laughs> well, that's not just curtains. You could have made your own selection of, of all this marvellous range of beautiful fabrics from Britain's leading fabric designers. Curtains, bed table linen, furnishing fabrics, and all other coordinating accessories. A wonderful chance to furnish your own with all the sort of designs you've always wanted. You could have chosen them, and you can imagine just how much something like that would cost. Fabulous prizes, always in three to one, being rejected. Oh! Here you go. A lovely prize, Lorraine. What do you say? Yes, you're right. And oh. listening to the audience, so you see where that gets you. You know who you've got to get rid of? We've got one more item to go. Okay, then we're down to the final three. Here's the last item, in fact, of our vaudeville theme. And in the days when we're all being told to buy British, it's nice to say, well, let's also entertain English. And we're going to do that for you right now with the Prince of the Wide Boys, Arthur English. Oh, you've stopped it. I've been, I've been robbed, I've been robbed. Oh, there it is in my jumper, lovely. Oh, my mum, they're laughing at me again. How do you like the whistle? I like the suit, ain't bad, is it? Borrowed it off my mate Harry, you know Harry? He used to be a meteorological officer. He can look at a girl and tell weather. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I've never told that joke before. I'll never tell it again. Anyway, do you know what? I'm not getting out. Excuse my back. I'm getting more laughed over this side. My mate Harry's just got a lovely job. Going past the police station. There's a big notice outside. Man wanted for robbery. He's applying for that. And I'm, I'm in a funny mood. I told the director. He said, that's a change. No, I, I, I know I'm in a very funny mood. I've just done a burglary. I've got a pair of dark glasses, full moustache, water pistol, rushed into the nearest post office, tripped over the mat and fell flat on my face. Post mistress said, is this a stick-up? I said, no, it's a mess-up. Give us a book of stamps. There's a dog. No, because the game is a No, no, no. Not too much applauding. The union will be after me. No, I'm in the union. A bloke came up to me the other day. He said, here, do you, are you a member of the Spivs union? I said, Spivs What's that? He said, marvellous. Tuppence a week, you come into full benefit. I said, full benefit? He said, yeah, after the first three tuppences, you, you, you get the full benefit. I said, I know, I keep asking you, what is full benefit? He said, you go down the labour exchange, they offer you a job, we fight your case for you. That's marvellous. And I don't bother, I don't bother. I don't worry about the, I don't worry about the labour exchange, I'm a founder member. Anyway, I'm walking down the street the other day, I'm walking, and, and there's a lady walking in front of me, she comes to Dumble. Ace King, Queen Jack, on the deck, I'm behind, I want to help her, see? I open her handbag, give her a bit of fresh air, she opened her eyes, she said, where am I, where am I? I said, map of London, lady, half a crown. <laughs> what you could have helped them. I help people. I, I, I'm in Whitehall, an American came up to me, a bit of acting here, an American came up, I said, listen, Buster, it ain't bad, is it? Listen, Buster. He said, tell me, is this Whitehall? I said, yes. He said, which side is the war office on? I said, ours, I think. And it's, it's nice. 
It's nice. Yes. I was... They've got some marble... They've got them nightclubs down. Have you seen these nightclubs? Uh, that great big thick door, you knock on the door, and a little grill opens. A bloke in front of me knocks on the door, the grill opens, and the bloke says, yes. The fella says, C.I.D. He said, come in, Sid. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest, the dumbest about you. Forget the beginning of this one. I forgot the end. I don't know where they are. Oh, yeah, he said, the bloke said, I've got a black Mariah out here. He said, well, bring her in. There's no colour bar here. <laughs> you see, no, it's, it's very true. Because you, you can do it, you see, it's the speed you go. And if you go a long time, because it's about that thick, and you see, it's got a special flavour. Well, as the wind comes down the other side, and it goes up the other side, you do, and it's on, and you're, you're walking, and you may lie a bit different, you go straight, and you, go, and you turn, because he's done, and he's gone. Well, as you're walking, I don't know what the devil I'm talking about. Play the music, open the cage! Yes! <laughs> Yes, Here. Now, this gentleman makes me seem slow, doesn't he? Oh, yes. <laughs> good to see you again. Nice Arthur. to see you, Really smart. And really congratulations good. on that marvellous performance in Pygmalion. Oh, <laughs> What are you going to leave Jeff and Lorraine as a clip? There you go. Ah, a flashy spiv tie from That's Arthur. It. And what does the rhyme say? Right, now then, you'll, I'll kill the image if I put the glasses on. I'm going to do another. <laughs> Shady that I may be, dim I'm really not. What's to remember at breakfast? Not one for the pot. What a lot. Lorraine, oh. right. any idea? Haven't a clue. Haven't a clue. What about thanking Mr. Arthur English? Thanks, Arthur. Good luck. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur. Uh, you can't hear that one again, but I can read either of these two. The dummy brought in by uh, Sandy Powell. Of course, the uh, wallflower seeds brought in by Paula what's from Jeep. What's to remember at breakfast? What happened the night before? No, oh, or the tea. Well, which one would you like to hear? Can we hear the dummy? Dummy, yes, okay. Sandy said, uh, can you hear me, mother? But which of us is speaking? We'll turn the tables vertically in case you think of peeking. So, now, you've got rid of uh, some terrific prizes. We've got to get rid of that bin for you. That's Goodness the one you've got to really think about. I think the seeds are in the garden. The bin is outside in the garden. If you're in the soup, I think... I think we'll just reject that. Yes, Jeff? Yes. All right, no. OK. You're rejecting the wallflower seeds brought in by Paula from Jeep. Jeep was general purpose, but of course we don't mean the group. Ours is something special with yours, your right in the soup. Now, have we chosen right this time? Jeep was general purpose, but of course we don't mean the group. Well, we meant the original Jeep, which got its name, of course, from general purpose vehicle. Right, GP. So could this be a vehicle or something else which is general purpose? How's this something special with yours, you're right in the soup? Could that mean some sort of kitchen equipment? But why should ours be special and yours land you in the soup? Well, what about the wallflower seeds? Mm -hmm. Well, wallflower, of course, is someone who's usually left alone, and you've left alone Dusty Ben, yeah! Oh, yeah. Got it! John, John, you've got to be feeling happier now, oh, eh? Yes, a lot. Oh, great. I should think that fella in the audience ought to take home a dustbin just for that, don't you? <laughs> well, at last you've managed to get rid of it. You've got rid of dusty bin, so we know you're going to take home a great prize tonight. Now, of course, we're down to the final two. Ty brought in by Arthur English. Of course, I can read them both again. Please. Arthur said, shady that I may be, dim I'm really not. What's to remember at breakfast? Not one for the pot, what a lot. That's what Arthur said. And, of course, the dummy again from Sandy Powell. Sandy said, can you hear me, mother? But which of us is speaking? We'll turn the tables vertically in case you think of peeking. Breakfast tie. Them cup, shady tie. Cup please. tie. Cup tie? Match. Glasgow Celtic and the Rangers? <laughs> Spain. No, that's not a cup tie. That's just a look at it. That's war, isn't it? <laughs> cup tie. Spain. That could be uh, the World Cup. And what do you think this one is? I think that could be recording equipment. We think that's some form of stereo recording uh -huh. equipment. Oh, well, yeah, you've stuck with that all Well, whatever it is, it's not the bin. <laughs> so one's got to go. What do you want to go for, Tony? I think we keep that. Then. So you want to reject Arthur English's tie? Well, he does. Yes. He does. She, she keeps putting on on you, Jeff. It's on to you. Yes. yes, yes, yes. All right, so you're rejecting the tie brought in from Arthur. Shady that I may be, dim I'm really not. What's to remember at breakfast? Not one for the pot. What a lot. Is what Arthur I said. <laughs> she doesn't want to look shady Can't that I may be, so is this something to avoid? Dim, I'm really not. Well, whatever it is, it must be bright, 
that may fit together with flashy tie that Arthur brought you in. What's to remember at breakfast? Not one for the pot, what a lot. Well, there's not a lot of... There are, in fact, a lot of what's here, of course. Now, if you spell what's, not W-H, W-A-T-T-S, yeah, it becomes electrical. Bright, flashy, shady, electrical, something to do with breakfast. Yes, you've rejected this superb range of Tiffany Art Nouveau lighting. Take a look. That is, you know, extremely popular, and I can tell you, extremely expensive. Would you like to hazard a guess for what that costs? Because I can't tell you. I, I couldn't hazard a oh, guess. Oh, 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 what do you think? A lot. A lot. Well, that's, that's exactly what I said. A lot of money, a fabulous part prize, but it's been rejected. It has to go. Thank you very much, Libby. Thank you. OK. The classic tie from Arthur. We're left. We're left with the dummy that uh, Sandy brought in. Because we should have had Ronnie Corbett for this, but his wife had gone out and he couldn't reach the doorknob. <laughs> However, this is what you're taking back with you. Can you hear me, Mother, said Sandy, but which of us is speaking? We'll turn the tables vertically in case you think of peeking. Now, you've rejected some fabulous prizes, including a car tonight, but you've got rid of the bin. Can you hear me, Mother, but which of us is speaking? Sandy brought you in the dummy. There were, of course, two possible speakers, which, of course, is what you've hinged on all the time. Or did you think the dummy meant that you'd be a dummy if you took this one? Well... Turn the tables vertically with two speakers and turn tables. You might expect some sort of music centre, which you did. Uh, uh, would that, uh, would the turntable be ver vertical? That's the problem here. Well, in fact, this one is. Yes, you've won the very latest vertical operating record players. And in case you think of peaking, just to make it a bit more to peak at, this remote controlled colour television and video recording. <laughs> I think you're just a little bit... There oh, you go, Lorraine. Great. Stand around a great, says Jeff. Knocked out, Jeff. Huh? Look at that fabulous colour oh, TV, yeah, remote control, crazy. fabulous speakers, great vertical operating stereo, and a terrific brand new video recorder. Oh, you haven't got one of those, huh? I know. Feeling very, very happy, oh, right? Yeah, I know. Well. You're going you're gonna to be three soon, aren't you? That's right. There you are. Someone's on the way. There you are. That can't be bad, can it? To enjoy it. Fabulous prize and money in the clear. What was it, Fiona? Ah, Fiona's got the money. What did you win? £540. Pounds. £540 pounds to go with that. That can't be bad. Fabulous. Congratulations, Jeff. Good luck, Thank you. Lorraine. Good luck. Thank you. Be thinking about you. Fabulous people, ladies and gentlemen, as always on 321. We're going to look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Don't forget, until then, have a good week. Good night, everybody. Classic. Unbelievable.